Well, hi everyone. Today I'm going to cover the disastrous infrastructure failure that occurred for a project under construction in downtown Bangkok, Thailand. This failure occurred Tuesday morning, September 24th, local time, 2025. I'm recording this video roughly 30 hours later on September 24th, my time. And let's just go through this. You never see situations like this in urban environments. It's, it's quite shocking. So you can see that people have started filming already. You get the surface collapse into what appears to be a large underground void. And this happened, like I said, in the, in the morning hours when people were out and about. So this is located in downtown Bangkok in the Dusit district. This occurred right in front of a hospital, Vajira Hospital. And let's just zoom out to see where this is. This is right next to the Chao Phraya River. So what exactly happened here? The Bangkok governor indicated that this collapse was associated with the construction of an underground tunnel leading into an underground railway station. Reportedly, this failure was initiated with the rupture of an underground water pipe but no details were provided. So one of the first things I wondered is, was there a Chinese connection here? And it turns out this project, it's a two and a half billion dollar construction project, got started in 2022. It's called the Purple Line. And this is a joint venture project between a Thai Italian company and a Chinese consortium. And this phase of the project was listed as contract one, which was for the design and construction of the tunnel and underground stations in one area of the project. And this is the joint venture, the CKSTPL joint venture. The depth to these structures were 16 to 35 meters or roughly 50 to 100 feet in depth. So again, this joint venture is sino -Thai Engineering and Construction that have the contract with Mass Rapid Transit Authority of Thailand. And I know there's been a lot of scrutiny relative to China's involvement in major infrastructure projects in Thailand, most particularly in the aftermath of the building collapse that occurred in March of 2025 that killed nearly 100 people. Quite the disaster. The Chinese component was China Railway number 10. So let's go back to these videos of this collapse. Very dramatic. You can see somebody appears to be filming from a nearby apartment. And you can see it looks like somebody just pulled a drain plug from down below. Soil water is just going into some underground cavity. Of course, it's been reported it's going into the tunnel and railway station that was under construction. Now look at these people. They always congregate at the edge of a big opening. It's just human nature. It's not a good idea to stand in close proximity to an actively enlarging, massive hole in the ground. You see the soils appear to be very, very soft or loose here, which is pretty typical of the soils in Thailand. Yeah, we got the people congregating and maybe they ought to think about moving here. You could have seemingly rigid pavement that's actually undermined so there's no support below and you don't know it until the thing collapses altogether. All right, they're moving away here. There it goes. Person. Okay, where people always look away at the critical moments. All right, let's look at some other images here. This happened right in front of a, looks like a four or five story hospital. Fortunately, the hospital's on deep foundation elements. It looks like drilled shafts. Now I think they've reported that this building, this hospital building is stable, but I think they should evacuate it as a precaution until they do a thorough evaluation. You know, whenever you have deep foundation elements that 
have lateral support that's removed, the building's vulnerable to perhaps collapse from lateral loading from winds or even another earthquake. I'm sure that those drill shaft foundations weren't designed to have that much exposed area such that you know, there was never a situation where it was anticipated that those upper portions of the drill shafts would be exposed. So again, people were standing just to the edge of the excavation. Not a good place to stand. I mean, this is a massive disaster. First of all, they have to evaluate the extent of the damage. It's not likely that the underground situation is stable at this point just because it appears to have stopped raveling into the hole. And what has to happen here, aside from evaluating the impacts to all the adjacent structures above ground, is they'll have to stabilize the underground situation, essentially plug openings where soil could move into at a later date. And of course, having this hospital and this excavation in close proximity to the Chow Praia River, you wonder how vulnerable this excavation is to seepage and infiltration of, of surface water. I mean, this is still monsoon season. So one of the things I would suggest that they do there is use NSAR satellite imaging. Uh, companies like Value Space, I've worked with them on a number of my videos, can use existing satellite data to determine if there's been a change in the position of structures throughout this area. That's be one of the first things that I would do. And it's uh, very accurate, very sensitive to changes over time as these satellite overflights occur roughly every 12 days. So I'll continue to follow the story. I'll do updates to relate what they've done or what they will do to stabilize this situation and what the eventual impacts have been. This is a massive disruption to a major urban area in Bangkok, Thailand. These are the situations that you never want to have happen uh, during construction or at any time. But this type of thing is, is really inexcusable unless there's some extraordinary mitigating circumstances. But certainly there could have been tremendous potential for injury and loss of life here. And it's just a miracle, really, that no one was hurt uh, given to how much material move down into the underground openings here at this construction project. So thanks very much, everyone. I want to send a shout out to those of you who have contributed to buy me a coffee. That's a great way to support this channel. I also want to thank the channel members and those of you who have contributed to Super Thanks, additional great ways to support this channel. So stay tuned for future videos, everyone.